So I'm going to call the April 20th Conway Select Board meeting to order at 6 p.m. Uh, as usual, we are doing the meeting over Zoom and uh, we're recording it and it will be shown on FCAT Media. Uh, the FCAT uh, Studios uh, video on demand channel and it should be up within a day or two. And then you can recommend to all your friends if they can't sleep at night, they can watch our select board meetings. Uh, so, minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look at last week's minutes? Yeah, they looked fine to me. They're good. They're very good. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of April 12th. Yes, second. I vote aye. Uh, and I'll... Aye. Uh, Erica votes aye. Yes, second. And Bill is third. nodding his head and saying aye. So we all yes. are agreeing. And, and really, we, we're, we really are trying to stick with actually a verbal uh, aye and, uh, and sort of a roll call kind of thing. Aye. So meetings attended by select board members. So Erica, you're usually first up. Yes, but I... Um... I think apart from the meeting that we had, our, our contract negotiation um, on thir last Thursday with Ross, I think that was the only one. How about you, Phil? Yeah, so I had that uh, also, the uh, executive session contract negotiations with Ross. And, um, and then I had a very, uh, quite a long uh, FERCOG counselors meeting and the, uh, um, the, the long and the short of that is that FERCOG, you know, because of the COVID is sort of a healthcare provider in that we're giving, it's giving injections of vaccines um, and then billing for payment from insurance companies uh, and mass health and whatnot. And, um, and the payment for that is gonna be six months to a year that's how long they take to pay. So they don't really know how much they're gonna get back. And, um, and so there is we created this reserve fund and sort of a, an emergency reserve fund. But then they wanted, they wanted to sort of have it self-sustaining to be a future emergency reserve fund. Um, and so there were, I sort of insisted that there be definitions to what an emergency is and that it be regional emergency and that, uh, they work out a very limited use for the fund, potential use for the funds. It can't just be because I wanted them, of course, to we we're talking about a potential for a half million dollars. I, of course, wanted it returned to the towns and the assessments lowered. Um, and I was surprised that there was nobody else out of 30 FERCOG towns there that was in favor of that. So um, everybody else wanted a future emergency fund in that amount. And I, um, and I you know, I asked. Besides COVID, has there what what other emergency ever has taken place that would have been eligible? And it just nobody could really answer that question. So, um, but that's why it ended up being a long meeting because of me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so that was that was that. But you've got your role in life, I suppose. I suppose. Well, if they don't use it, I assume that it's carried over to the next year and sort of like giving it back to the towns. Yeah. And the reason that there's this pot of money in the first place is because they were successful getting grants to establish the ability to do all these vaccines. So, um, and they're getting COVID monies as well from the federal government and whatever. But the, 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 we're, ham we're hamstrung because... The, the nature of the system um, heavily favors the mass, the, the, the mass vaccination sites and the pharmacies that are involved. And that's a, a product of the federal, federal funding mechanisms that are behind it all. And so they're only giving a few thousand to the FERCOG, um, which includes our four town health Re frontier regional health consortium. Oh. Um, and, um, and we're left to sort of oh. on our own do the billing and stuff. So, um, yeah. 
to be continued. Great. Well, I had a conservation commission meeting on Tuesday and a site visit on Wednesday, and we had our fortunately very successful contract negotiation with Ross, and we'll introduce him shortly. And on Thursday, we had an FCAT board meeting. So that was my week. Uh, some weeks it's nothing, but some weeks it's something every night. Um, so while we're, while we're saying all of those things, I want every, to introduce, and this is mostly for everyone at home that's going to be watching this over the week, uh, we, we've hired our interim town administrator, a guy named Ross Perry, and this house is just some kind of prophylactic cleanup. Attending our meeting tonight. Uh, uh, with a uh, with a town laptop, and he's back at his house, and he spent the day in Conway today, and he'll be back tomorrow, and they, they, he'll, he'll be spending a couple nights a week he, yeah. locally, and and uh, spending at least three days a week in town. So I hope people, especially after the pandemic, get a chance to meet our new town town interim town administrator, and uh, and we're sad to see Tom go, but but I think Ross is gonna be fabulous. Thank you. Welcome, Ross. Thank you. It's great. It's great to be in Conway today. The weather is always that good. Honest. Yeah. Always. That's what you told me. That's what you told me when I applied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From. Yeah. Actually, a little, a little known secret, Ross, the weather is always great in Conway. <laughs> okay. So, we um we ask about public comments, but and public comments I don't see. I'm not sure. So so we uh, I, I, a couple of people are here who might be considered public, but they're going to be part of the agenda. And I don't think we have anybody who's here um, who might want to make a comment. But if anybody does, yell real quick. I think we're good. So we had two pieces of old business on the agenda, and the first was to go to look back over the 22 budget that we've been doing. Tom, do you want to talk to changes on the budget? Yeah, I just had one thing. We did get a late-breaking bill from Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School for $6,300 for special education. We had not anticipated that, so I've added that to the money article in the warrant that was going to be paying for other unexpected expenses from Smith Voke. Uh, they, they had an, uh, an extra student this year. And I've also added it, um, anticipating that it will be uh, ongoing next year into uh, the operating budget for next year in Article 2. Uh, that's the only change I have. Great. Any other questions for Tom about the budget? We've kind of voted the budget and approved it, and I assume we don't have to go back and re-vote the Smith Voke recommendation. We voted Article Two. Uh, this is good, uh, especially if we have money for it. It's yeah, that's all good to me. Yeah. And okay, and then there was there was a discussion. Tom has sent us out a bunch of notes about what to do about the new Massachusetts state holiday on Juneteenth. Uh, I think that's June nineteenth. And, uh, and, and, and really the question is how our town would like to handle it. Um, I think we may be obligated to let people take it at least as a vacation day and then should we pay it? And, uh, and Tom, do you wanna talk about what the schools are doing and maybe we could follow them? Yes, the, um, the schools have been notified by their council that uh, Juneteenth is a mandatory holiday um, for regional schools and municipalities. Uh, so so the, the town offices uh, should close. Um, and of course, with the, uh, with the schools um, having unions, I don't think there's any, any question of them um, giving pay for the day off. I also think it would be um, unfortunate if Conway told, uh, told its uh, employees to take the day off and then didn't pay them for it. So, you know, we have the money in the budget. I don't see any, any, any problem with, uh, with uh, accepting this new state holiday as a paid holiday in Conway. No. 
No. no, absolutely not. <laughs> no. No um, problem. <laughs> uh, like, for, for, first of all, um, f with respect to the teachers, it's a, it is an item for collective bargaining for all of our four unions. And um, second of all, the school tends to be no longer uh, operating on June 21st. Today, this year, Frontier's last day is the Frontier and Conway Grammar's last day is June 10th. Um, so it's, but to the extent that those once in a great while, once every 10 years, the school year lasts that long. Be, um, but it won't, it, it's not, not ever going to go that way in the future because now there, now there's the ability to do a remote day in a, for, for snow days. We're, so it's really sort of a non-factor for the schools, but still, um, the, 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 the way that that would have been resolved would have been to trade another holiday for it. Um, one that is not the many holidays that are not legally mandated that are still observed. And so that's what we should be doing. You know, we should be soliciting the opinion of the employees um, saying, which holiday would you like to trade for Juneteenth and give them a list of ones they can. Then. Um, so if I'm hearing this right, Phil, you, you don't think we should pay for June 19th. No, nah. Erica, I thought it sounded like you think we should. I absolutely think that we should pay for June 19th. I mean, that's a state mandated oh. holiday. I think that we should. Yes. Pay. OK, yes. Yeah. So, so I want to correct what I just said. We should pay for June 19th, but we should not pay for one of the other ones that we do currently pay. But I don't agree with that. <laughs> I mean, this is a this is a this is a new additional. This is a new uh, holiday. The state is mandated, um, regardless of the the intent behind the holiday. Well, please, this day. I'm going to try to move the meeting I mean, I don't, along it, here. They shouldn't yeah. have to trade. So, so uh, I'm going to make a motion that we that we. <laughs> The thinking was to trade that for the schools was to trade uh, Columbus Day um, was one of the suggestions. Not, that, that's not a legally people required. Say. Um, that wasn't that wasn't legally required that we observe Columbus Day, I believe. Um, and there was another one that was eligible too, but and that was what was floated to with initial proposals to the unions um, for memorandums of understanding, but. Um, but we're not specifically we're not talking about the schools. We're talking about town employees, right? Which is always a, a which is which is precedent. which will always be used as a precedent by the unions that are always observing this sort of thing. Um, so what we what we do here is what we're going to be doing for the schools too, or at least it, that's what they'll be arguing for us to do if it's more generous than what's proposed for them. Um, well, in general, we always argue that we and the schools should work together. Yeah. Yeah. So let the union, let, let it be worked out through, through negotiate collective bargaining um, first before, before the town takes a position would be my ideal th thought on it. Um, so you want to take the position that we, that we, we, we do whatever the schools do. Uh that's that's a fair position at least i mean that's a fair position we shouldn't do any worse we shouldn't do any worse for our, for our employees than what the schools do yeah suppose yeah but phil you, you said the schools the schools aren't even going to be in session so it's not an issue for no they're still it's still going to be addressed in collective bargaining it's on the list yeah. um but which which and i i don't know whether it was going to be it was felt it was felt that it wasn't significant for this year because the day of the school closing is known for this year. And um, so I don't think it's going to be subject to separate MOUs, but we start, we start our, you know, triannual uh, negotiations next winter. So it'll be on it. We'll, we'll deal with it then. So I don't, <clears throat> what's the significance of waiting six months? Well, that we have June 19th coming up. That's the significance. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> which which would be celebrated this year on Friday, June 18th, because it falls on a Saturday. If it fell on a Sunday, it would be celebrated on the on the Monday following.
Well, okay. I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a motion that we that we uh, support that we will that we will do it this that we will follow the school's lead, wh what they do with June nineteenth. Yeah, the school's not going to be leading before this June nineteenth, though. So that would leave this that would leave a, a separate decision about this June nineteenth. Okay. How about I'll make a motion that uh, that we're gonna that we're gonna pay it for this June nineteenth, and after that, once the school makes a decision, we'll follow them. All right, I'll live with that. What do you think, Eric? Is that a is that a second? I th I think Erica yeah. is uh, had to get off. He fell off. Yeah. So so would you take that as a second, Phil? Uh, to the one time only proposal. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to vote aye. And if you seconded it, I'm going to assume that's still yes. voting aye. Yes. So we passed that. Okay. Um, Ron, are you on the call yet? I, I think so. But uh, at the moment, he's muted. I may have done that um, myself. Sorry about that. Ron, you'll have to unmute. Am I there now? Hi, Ron. Yep. Hi. Yep. Good evening. So, good evening. So you're going to ask us for some money? No. Are you, are I'm asking to have some signatures so I can get repaid for work that's already been paid for. <laughs> How can we say no to that? Um, it's a reimbursement from the state. I'm kind of confused that they have to go through this process to get collect money, but that's the way it is. So I have two proposed two um, reimbursement requests for Chapter 90 money. Um, first one was for work that we did on Waitley Road. They're actually for both for Waitley Road, but the first part of the project was uh, reclamation and the paving of. Um, Waitley Road. Um, originally, I asked the state for $272,325, and the payments expenditures came in at $233,176.64. Um, we'll do that one first. Um, you have any questions about the reimbursement for that? So when how does that, gonna, how does that just, work? Yep. Ron, how does that work? Why don't they give the amount requested? Because I didn't spend that amount. Uh, See, I have to submit a request for and I have to estimate cost. Okay. Uh, and so it came in less that mainly because of the um de-escalation of diesel fuel and um, asphalt um, monies. So this is about so giving we, money. So this is about giving money back to the state. No, this is about the state paying us our Chapter 90 money for projects that are done. Yes, Phil. See, in the beginning, you would have you would have made the project cost two hundred and seventy-two thousand. Well, no, I just, it just triggered an immediate allergic reaction sort of sensation. So, right. um, yes. It's our money. It's in a bank. It's in an account. I mean, so we can use the difference for other projects. Ah, wonderful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good to hear. It's the money. We, the town has the money. We don't have it, but we have it available to us. Gotcha. We gotcha. can spend it how as long as it fits the guidelines of Chapter 90 spending, um, uh, yep. it, we don't lose the money. Gotcha. Good. So, so you, we're, we're going to vote these separately, Ron? That sounds fine with me? Yeah, I think we'd be be, it would be better so we'll, to do two different. Could you say that exact number, 233? 176.64 cents. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve Ron to submit for reimbursement of $233,176.64 of Chapter 90 money. Second. 
Second. I hear a second, and I actually I, see. Hi, so, here. Here, I Greg, in. Erica My says My internet hi. is dead. <laughs> Welcome back. And Phil says hi. Thank you. Yes. Okay, how about this next one, Ron? The next one is for the chip seal that we put over the new blacktop that we had just put down. Um, and that, that was a hundred, I request, asked for $104,500 and the total bills came to $101,640. Saving money again. Well, no, I'm, I'm keeping money to spend elsewhere. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, so, so any questions on that? Everybody good? Yeah. I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that Ron, uh, that we approve Ron's request to be reimbursed for 101640 of additional Chapter 90 money. Second. I hear a second. And aye. Erica says aye, and Phil says yes. Nods aye. I say aye. So great. Ron, do you have any idea what you're going to spend that uh, forty thousand plus on? Uh, well, other projects, probably Shirkshire, South Shirkshire Road. We we're hoping to do something with that this coming year. Um, there's always plenty to spend on. Just sure. usually not enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. If can I? Uh, uh, as far as the signatures go, the sooner I get these signed so I can get them uh, sent out so that Jan can have some money back that she's been having to take from other places, um, that would be great. <laughs> so I know yeah, Phil and I are both local and can sign tomorrow morning, perhaps, Phil? Yeah. yeah Eric will take a little there while, are. but I think that'll get yeah. you two of them. On Monday, but uh, yeah, I only to... really need two, but yeah, okay. yeah. however, yeah. that works. There, there, there are two sheets, there are two sets of two sheets, so four signatures from each person signing. Please, thank you. Okay, good, thanks, Tom. Thank you, Ron. All so right, yeah, one, one more piece of new business, and that is uh, a noise complaint from Brendan O'Connell. And uh, and then what what options or what what actions the town is going to take on it? Brendan uh, came in and talked, uh, you know, described the complaint to us a bit last week, and we invited him back as well as uh, Stephen Rua to come in and and talk to us about it. So, hi, Brendan. Hi, Rua. So, Brendan, do you want to quickly go over what you talked about last week? Yes, that sounds great. Um, so I, I did prepare a short written statement just to make sure I cover everything. Um, so as I shared last week, um, Rua Donnelly has uh, hired many companies to do non-farming related gardening and landscaping at her house, um, including activities such as chainsawing, leaf blowing, uh, lawn mowing, and earth moving. Um, the activity can go on three, four or five days a week. Um, sometimes it's constant from 8 a.m. to after 5 p.m. This includes weekend days, um, and this includes pretty much the warm months of the year. So um, really from we're talking about early April until as late as um, November or even December. Uh, my wife and I are both currently working from home and have a newborn. So we're here almost all the time um, during quarantine. And the constant noise that we can hear inside our house has caused us both significant stress, makes it hard to do our jobs, and we really can't enjoy our beautiful outdoor space when this noise is going on. And we've strongly considered moving because of the constant noise pr produced by, by this neighbor. Um, so um, I have taken some steps. Um, last spring, I contacted uh, the property owner to ask for consideration of abatement of the noise twice. Um, and I did receive a friendly response. Thank you for that. Um, that acknowledged the impact um, and offered to ask the landscaping companies to be more considerate. Um, but as far as I could tell, nothing really changed. Um, I emailed the property owner again last summer and um, as a follow-up and did not receive a response. And then this spring, a couple of weeks ago, I did file a noise complaint with the police and did not receive a response or follow-up to that. Um, and I did document many instances last summer of this, um, which I can go through. I'm going to move it along, though. 
Um, my specific question for the select board in terms of a remedy is around um, any town regulation or bylaws governing noise. Um, so I, I did email Tom and he let me know that the town bylaws, um, he didn't think they covered yard work. If it were a business producing noise, usually producing noise, it would be subject, su subject to the protective bylaw and there is an enforcement mechanism, the town building inspector. Um, and so the bylaw is written, this is uh, section 22, um, part one, um, subsection B, um, no use of the premises is permitted that would cause unreasonable uh, uh, traffic, noise, light, odor, electronic radiation or um, pollution levels incompatible with the character of the neighborhood. Um, however, section 22.1 shall not apply to any educational, religious, agricultural, horticultural, floricultural, or other uses exempted by statute. Um, and, you know, I, I just want to say this level of noise is unreasonable, and I think it's really incompatible with our residential neighborhood. We live within earshot of about 15 other houses and a cornfield. Um, and I can say with certainty that no one else produces a comparable or consistent level of noxious noise. Now, I, I don't think I'm being unreasonable. I don't expect total silence living in a rural environment. And I myself produce loud noise occasionally. I mow my lawn um, uh, about uh, every other week. Um, but my wife and I chose to move to the beautiful woods in Conway six years ago so we can enjoy peace and quiet, hear the wind, the birds in the, in the trees. And I think most of our other neighbors feel the same way. Um, and as Tom said in his email to me, I would have some recourse and this noisy activity would be regulated if it were a business that were equally noisy. Um, however, because the use of this property is horticultural, it's apparently completely unregulated when it comes to noise. Um, and I think that reasonable regulations for business are, are great. Um, I also think businesses contribute to the tax base of the town and I want there to be business here. Um, the, this noisy maintenance of a private garden, um, I don't see as contributing to the town at large. Um, and I find it to be a nuisance. Um, and this disruptive noise impact on neighbors, I think ends up being the same as many of the prohibited activities in the bylaw. Um, so I, I really don't think that horticultural uses, per personal horticultural uses should be exempted from rules governing unreasonable amounts of noise. So I'm bringing the situation to the select board in order to discuss the bylaws currently written, um, potentially changing the language to remove the exemption for horticultural uses, as well as any other possible remedies the town can provide or that, that Rua can provide because you're here as well for what has been an extremely stressful and draining situation for myself and my family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ru and Steve, do you want to do you want to respond, or would you like us to ask questions, or? Well, we could do both. Uh, if you want. Uh, can you hear me well? I, I I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so, let me just walk through what happened, just so you understand where what our norms are here. Um, so last year, Steve and I were uh, away uh, involuntarily. But uh, I was for a two month period. And during that time, I had some work done on our property we had planned before the pandemic, um, which is unusual, uh, was to expand our patio and get some stonework done by Charlie Marr. Uh, we were also having a fence installed by Jim Richardson in Shelburne. And um, I'm sure there was noise associated with but I wasn't home to manage it. Um, I think the worst of the noise was probably the stonework, which was, you know, wasn't constant, but when it was on, was, was really loud. Uh, so I responded to Brendan, um, uh, basically because I too don't like noise, but um, it made uh, uh, his, his initial complaint made me concerned that we were producing noise and we needed to. So um, what I did in response was to talk to all the contractors who were and explained that um, uh, one of our neighbors and 
probably other neighbors were offended by the noise. I asked them to, um, a number of things, uh, was to compress the amount of time they used machinery to short periods and get it all done at once rather than off all day. Um, uh, I arranged for the landscaping crew and the people who were doing the fence work um, to use their quietest machines. Um, on the whole, we were not getting things done on weekends. I might have some Saturdays when Charlie Marsh was couldn't couldn't do it another day. Um, but but on the whole, uh, this is weekday activity, and I think. Um, with all due respect, I think Brendan's exaggerated the kind of noise that we produce here. Um, what, what goes on on a regular basis is uh, four times a year we get our generator checked, which is a little noisy for a short time. Uh, spring and fall cleanup by the landscape crew and regular mowing of the lawn. Uh, employ a gardener, Mandy Kim, who uses a very small uh, homeowner tractor that I own. And as far as I know, it's, it's really not noisy at all. Um, and occasionally we have to do some tree work, fall storms. We live on a, uh, about 18 acres of land and some of it's treed. And uh, in the past few years, we've had uh, some downed trees and the big storms that have come through. Uh, for example, there was just one that occurred while we were away uh, in early March. Uh, where I had to call Richardson's crew in. Honestly, I don't know how much noise they made, but there was a tree that fell on my garden and on a couple of walls and a path, and it, it needed to be cleaned up. So um, I, I'm trying to do whatever I can uh, to, you know, to manage noise on our property. Um, but uh, I would like to say that, particularly in the last year, but maybe this is general. Um, our neighborhood is a little noisy. Uh, we have people across the street who, for periodic purposes last year, had six trucks, a couple of semi-trailers, you know, so enormous amount of work going on, very loud uh, in the house across the street from us. Um, right now, I've got two neighbors who are having driveway work done, um, which is, and somebody's got an enormous, and one of my neighbors, earth mover, uh, doing work over on her side of the property. There is noise here. Um, but I think it's wrong to say it's three, four, five days a week. No, it isn't, uh, at least not for me. And uh, I, I'm afraid one of the difficulties, and I wish I could do something about it, is the lay of the land here away kind of downward behind my property toward Brendan's and his wife's uh, my and Steve's. Uh, I, I think that there, there must be a noise, either amplification or else a, just a carrying of noise down the hill. And maybe not just from this property, but from my next door neighbor, the one beyond that, the one beyond, and all this noise. Um, so I'm happy to, to continue to try to minimize noise here. Uh, and, and I continually ask that we press the amount of time that they use their softest machines and I question whether everything noisy has to be here. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is our home. I am an active gardener. Um, I have no intention of giving up my one gardener who sometimes more often, you know, and uh, unless I have to, I was unaware there were any bylaws that we would arguably be violating. Uh, my understanding is that the noise level from my is pretty comparable to what uh, is going on in the neighborhood on Graves Road. Uh, Brendan, of course, is down on Reed's Bridge Road, and there may be, I, I, I know that the properties down there are far quieter than the ones that here on the hill, um, but but um, the, I I just don't think what I'm doing or Steve is doing is is inconsistent with what normally goes on in in our town. Um, if there Tom, are some can I ask a, 
if there are some practical suggestions beyond what I've done, I would be very happy to uh, consider them and implement them if they are reasonable. Erica, before you ask your question, Steve, do you have anything you want to say or is that good? You're muted, Steve. I'm muted. So, no, go. I think it's, um, no, every, Rua speaks for us. She's the one doing most of the gardening and we have timber work done, has to be done. It's when trees fall near property and so forth. So we do have gardeners. Yeah. <laughs> It's done and lawnmowers once a week. I just think it's all reasonable. I can't understand this. I'm not going to say anymore. Okay. Erica, what did you have? Um, well, I was going to ask Tom just from a practical perspective if we were to amend the town's bylaws, like w what would that entail? A certain number of signatures? Like, would, it, would it be a petition? It would be a, a town meeting vote based on the warrant. Okay. And how would we get that? I mean, obviously, I think it's too late, obviously, for this for this town meeting. But and <laughs> I apologize for my my naivety, but I'm like I'm new. This is my first year. But how would we get that if if we wanted to make that a warrant article or propose an amendment to the bylaw? What would that entail? Well. Um, the select board could choose to bring it forward, or it could come through a citizen's petition. Okay. And what is and the citizen's petition would require how many signatures? Uh, just 10, I think. Okay. And that uh, would require a public hearing, right? Uh, oh, if it were a change to the oh, right, because it's the, it's the protective bylaws, it's the zoning bylaws. So yes, uh, the plan the planning board would be in would uh, have to hold a hearing on that. So so who people would have to have to petition the planning board first, and then, um, or or they they petition the select board and then it goes to the planning board. They hold a hearing, and uh, and then it it, it uh, they might propose changes to it um, if it's just a petition. Um, then it has to go on the warrant uh, the way it was presented. Um, so it's, um, you know, it'd probably be best to, to go the planning board route first and see if, if there were any, uh, you know, see what, what changes might be proposed. Okay, thank you. I just, I just want to bring some transparency to the process. So, Brendan, I was interested in noise, too, and, and I went over and drove around and you know, ruined Steve's neighborhood, and yes, I heard a lot of noise, but not coming from their property. Yeah, the absolutely. Across the street, we're, we're doing a big construction project with a COCOT excavator, and the people next door to them had a massive trailer of some snows, I think, with, with really very large um, lawn mowers, and they were mowing their lawn. Um, yeah. But there was no noise from Steve and Rua. No, absolutely. Thanks, thanks for that, Bob. And you're absolutely right. Um, as, is, as is Rua, there is, you know, another major project going on um, from neighbors. Um, you know, I, I do want to say that you know, these other projects, because they're construction projects, are periodic. Um, they have a start date and an end date. Um, and while noisy, and Rue is correct, also the project last summer that she described was quite noisy, um, they end. You know, they, the project is done and then the workers go away. Um, you know, the nature of gardening and landscaping is that it's um, continuous. Um, this is something we've dealt with since we moved to the property. Um, and been pretty frustrated by. Um, last summer, I was so frustrated, I documented many instances of noise coming from this specific property um, over a period of six weeks over the summer, which is not the period that Rue is describing um, in the spring when Charlie was doing some work. This is a different time period. Um, I jog a lot in the neighborhood, I drive by. Um, so these are instances where I was clearly able to 
identified the noise as coming from her house. Um, so over a six week period over the summer, um, previous summer from June 26th to August 10th, I identified 18 instances of loud noise on 18 separate days. Um, that's over a six week period. So that's actually, um, you know, nearly half the days um, in this period that I'm describing. Um, I'm just gonna read it off because I think that it sort of gives, it sort of paints a picture. Um, so June 26th, 6 p.m. Chainsaw. Oh, come on, Brandon. I don't think that? you need to talk anymore. I, I don't think I don't think you need to say that each each deal. But look, what she, what Rua does is have landscaper is landscaper in somebody related to the select board here. Landscapers in. She drives a tractor. Is that what you're referring to? The tractor driving around the property. Can I can I finish speaking? You interrupted me. Um, no, I'm not, um, or not, not for the most part. Um, so, um, so this was the first one I mentioned chainsawing, hammering, bang, banging after regular work hours on a Friday, June 29th, 2 PM, um, loud humming noise, July 1st, 9 AM to 12 30 PM, several hours of lawn mowing, July 2nd, 9 AM to 3 30 PM. This is a holiday weekend chainsawing noises most of the day. Um, July 5th, 8.30 a.m., low humming noise. July 7th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., chainsaw noise. July 13th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., chainsaw noise. July 15th, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., lawn mowing. July 22nd, 9.30 a.m., chainsaw noise. July 24th, 4.58 p.m., chainsaw noise. July 29th, intermittent chainsaw noise throughout the day. July 30th, 10.15 a.m. to 4 p.m., Chainsaw began in morning, ended at 2 p.m., then lawn, then lawn mowing began. July, um, August 2nd, 10 a.m. lawn mowing. August 3rd, 10, 15 a.m. to 2 p.m. Chainsaw, then different loud noises in afternoon. Uh, August 6th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. lawn mowing, following, followed by loud ground grinding sound and high-pitched motor sound. August 10th, 1250 p.m. tractor sounds, loud crunch, crunching sounds. Um, um, August 11th, 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., chainsaw noise. Um, August 12th, um, starting at 7.30 a.m., lawn mowing. These are instances where, as I mentioned, um, and <laughs> I don't want to spend this much time. Um, I just did this really to prove to myself how constant this was. Um, and I, I don't want to spend this much time um, paying attention to a neighbor's noise, but just, just, to, just to kind of um, counter to what Rue is saying in terms of this being episodic or this being linked to um, specific work going on, you know, it's really, um, it's, it's hugely disruptive and it's, it um, is multiple days a week. So, I mean, I think we're going to return back to what Tom told you originally last year, that we don't have a noise ordinance. And you're very welcome to pursue that. Um, you know, and you can come back to the board when you're doing that and see if the board will will pursue it. And, and I do think it would be good to start with the planning board because you want to change their bylaws. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, they're, they hold a great hearing and they've been well attended, especially during during the pandemic with Zoom meetings. People have, uh, you know, really enjoyed, you know, having an opportunity to easily come to those meetings and express their opinion. Wonderful. I, I appreciate that because I myself, and thank you, Erica, also for running through the process and Bob for explaining that um, because I myself wasn't familiar, um, specifically because it's a protective bylaw, what the process would be for modifying it. For, so thank you for that. I also want to apologize again to you, Brendan, what I did before, but, you know, having a lot of noisy things going in the pandemic year when everybody was grounded was really not what I planned, but it worked out that way. And I do think that, you know, the intermittent chainsaw things that you were, uh, you described in the summer, it was Charlie Marsh, who had a lot of different jobs going and um, had a severe act. His, his work just went on and on. And I couldn't get him to compress it and get over it and move on. So, uh, really do think unusual and I'm awfully sorry it happened during 
a time when, you know, we were all feeling terrible. Um, I'm trying my best, and I really will continue to uh, try my best to keep us quiet. I just wanted you to know that. I don't owe you any grudge. I, too, hate the noise. So I'm looking forward to um, that the new engines, you know, that are solar powered, where we won't hear it, you know. Um, and I hope that's our. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, you're having this opportunity to have a dialogue and I hope you guys can continue to do that. And in that in that light, uh, Bob, I would say I'd like Brendan, if you could, to communicate with us. We didn't hear anything about this yeah. until we heard Brendan. the complaint with me in the past in the, right. in the same past summer but not this time this right. time you took it to police to bar brethren talk to us about it i didn't hear anything and we were gone for a month so some of the tree cutting down that happened falling behind the property on the garden was an emergency cut so i know i know about that one but i don't know about any of the others so would you mind just advising us Either I can give you my email address or something and let me know what it is. I'm not much involved in the outside world, but I'd be happy to look at it. And if there's some way we can cut it down. I cannot believe that any contractor is really working after hours. So well, they usually work did, David, in okay. time. last They're, summer, but yeah. not, not this year. I don't you know, believe. I'm biased in favor of hiring local local people. You know, but it, it often means that they're not really pulled together professionals. You know, they're good at what they do, but they're not um, in and out, you know, fast. And and maybe in the future I should do that. But, you know, it, that that's how it You know, they, they, they kind of take their time and spread things out because they're making their work schedule, you know. Um, oh, I would hire Charlie ahead of any other any other Mason that I know. Well, me too. I mean, but, but, you know, you get Charlie when Charlie wants to come, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, well, yeah, Brendan, I'm, I'm sorry that, uh, uh, that Ken never got back to you. And I understood from your letter that you did talk to Ken. But Ken said that he went and talked to all of the neighbors and none of them felt there was a problem with noise. Uh, and, and that surprised him that, that you know, but I'm a little confused that Ken didn't speak to me as the original complainant. Um, I, I believe what you're saying. Um, I've never heard from him about this. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry he didn't get back to you, but that, that so we, we, we followed up with him because of our meeting today as, as to what happened. So is there anything else? I mean, I don't think right now there's anything that we can do. Um, uh, and, and you are very welcome to pursue a noise ordinance um, and, uh, if, for no. me, I feel it's unfortunate that, that we're, you're pointing at Steve and Rua, whereas it may be that the neighborhood has a, is making a lot of noise, you know, not necessarily Steve and Rua. Yeah, I th thanks for that, Bob, definitely. And, you know, to my earlier point about, you know, construction noise being periodic, episodic, it has a start date and end date versus, you know, something that I, um, you know, has, has been an issue since, since we moved here. And I expect to continue because it's, it's based on gardening and landscaping. And I do really, I absolutely appreciate what the efforts you've made to, to mitigate it. Um, and, um, I'm not, um, like writing down every time I was just, um, trying to paint an example, um, of, of the sort of, sort of what's going on. Um, but I do feel that I, I still, you know, this spring, I really dreaded it. You know, as soon as the weather gets warm, it's like the chainsaws come out. It really is. Um, and it's very loud in our yard. Um, the house doesn't, I mean, Rua said this too, the house doesn't look that close from the road because the road wraps around, but it's actually, it's actually quite, quite close as the crow flies. So it's very noisy in, in our yard. Um, and we can hear it inside our house, which I think speaks to the level of the noise as well. Phil, you look like you were about to jump in. Well, I'll just say, you know, that this is sort of a, a the, the general contours of 
of noise, you know, no, noise issues with with na- between um, neighbors is sort of a repeating theme, of course, of, of small town life. And we've we've looked we, we've you know, I, we've we've sort of looked at the issue of our noise bylaw in the past. And there are examples throughout the country of incredibly detailed noise bylaws with decibel levels um, with that, that uh, with, with specified decibel meter readers, uh, the, 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 you know, in the bylaw and the distance between the noise and and the da da da. And, um, and we don't really have anything. We don't have anything like that. We basically have um, almost no bylaws at all. And we've, the, our town is stubbornly resisted through its history uh, any attempts to regulate personal conduct um, on your own home. Um, and, you know, and we, we've, we, we, we passed a dog lease law 20 years ago, but it took 18 years of trying almost every year before they approved a mechanism to enforce the dog lease bylaw. Um, and, and, and that's because just nobody wanted, people just repeated, kept saying, I don't want to get, I don't want to get anybody in trouble for that. And um, so the, the, you know, when we thought about it in the past, just generally, the thinking was that um, bylaws that regulate conduct on people's home, uh, on people's personal property, are are really tough sells as a general concept, um, and that that the exception to that is sort of these public nuisances that affect large stretches of homes and large sort of areas of town. Um, that but. Um, but the, when, when it's just sort of, you know, a home or two homes or a few homes or whatever, then it's more of a private nuisance. And um, the, the they say that the remedy for that is is lawsuits um, and not really bylaws. But but those are difficult things to do in court and as well to prevail in those things in court. And so, I, well, you know, yeah. And I, I have been on. Um I would say both sides of the dispute. My husband tells me that both the best thing and the worst thing that he ever did was give his cell phone number to our neighbor <laughs> so that she can text him whenever she wants. And um, which is a good thing, but it's also, you know, as opposed to calling Bob Baker or calling Kenny because of, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we've, uh, we've had a very, um, complex and continually evolving relationship with our neighbor over the past, you know, 20 years now that we've lived in our house. <laughs> but, you know, we text each other. <laughs> We're in touch a lot. So is there anything else or I think I don't sure what else we're going to do right here. No, I, I don't want to take up any more time. I really appreciate the the time and your, your consideration. And, you know, I have a process laid out now, so thank you for providing that as well. In, in the meantime, Brendan, please do be in touch with us if there's okay. anything you think we can reasonably do, you know. Okay, thank you. Really are open to it, okay? Thank you. Great, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. So next on our agenda, so we have a, uh, any Tom, any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Uh, I do not have anything. I don't. You have an update. Uh, yes, I do. Um, uh, in committee news, um, two people who are interested in forming a forest and trails committee Marilyn Webster and Deb Donaldson are having an introductory meeting with me on Thursday to go over what that would look like. Uh, In departmental news, the new highway maintenance building floor is being poured this week. After that, the, the walls and the maintenance bay will be done. Overhead doors will be installed. Then the electrical work done along with the boiler and HVAC before the finish work. Uh, There is some new interest in a cannabis growing operation. I expect to speak with a representative of the business tomorrow. I've already sent the community host agreement policy. Do you know the location of that? I do not. 
Tom, um, our, our community host agreement policy, now that I've seen ones that have been drafted by other towns, specifically Deerfields, um, ours is, is uh, not so good in comparison to every other one I've seen. Is there any way we can change that before we have to re welcome a new one in? Sure, I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for next next time. All right. Great. Which is right. uh, ne next week. All right. I have, um, an email. I have an email that fields in it, so good. I'm, I'm just curious why someone would, um, like, how do we not know the proposed location if they're submitting a proposal? They haven't submitted it yet. So we just know that someone is planning to? They're just, exp yeah. somebody just has interest. Okay. Um, I may have mentioned as part of the budget discussion uh, that the fiscal year 21 tax rate, that's for this year, actually went down three cents thanks to some new growth. Uh, as you know, in Conway, new growth comes primarily from utility investment in infrastructure. Uh, but that was such good news, I thought I would uh, feature it a little bit more prominently. It's pretty rare that the tax rate goes down. Uh, and finally, I'd like to give a heads up that there will be a poll hearing next week uh, for a new poll jointly owned by Verizon and Eversource to be put up for the Nexamp project. Wow. The paperwork had been sent to the planning board rather than the select board as it is usual for planning boards to do the poll hearings. So there was a little delay, but I've put it on the agenda for Monday. Tom, is this for a single poll or more than one? Uh, just a single poll. Great. Is that it? Yeah, I'll I'll, it? I'll I'll send the uh, the map and the paperwork around uh, uh, day after tomorrow. Great. So, are there any select board member comments or concerns? No. I'm good. You're good. How about mail, Tom? I think you had one piece of mail. Yeah, actually, I've got a couple. Um, uh, the first is that uh, some of you may know Professor Richard Little of GCC. Um, Professor Richard Little is trying to drum up support um, for an official, an official Massachusetts state sedimentary structure. Those being the... The armored mud balls, exactly. So says the GCC employee. I'm very familiar with the armored mud balls. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, you walk by them every time you, uh, you go into the building yeah. there. We what the mud ball? Best. What mud ball? What am I missing? What are you talking about? It's this giant um, rock. That, yeah, it's a, it's a very special rock that's a GCC. <laughs> uh, this is uh, yeah. The I'll, I, I have um, I have some information on that. I will send around too. Is is he drumming uh, this up like by a Zoom uh, presentation or anything? No, he actually sent um, he sent a letter around. Huh. And and it, yeah, it's um, it has materials. I have, I have I photos on my phone. I can send them to you, Bob. <laughs> well, great. But I'm more interested in all you know all our Conway residents who watch this over the next week or two. They might want to know more about this too uh they, they well, should take you to, tom i take it or he eric to be like state um like the what i don't know the state fossil or the state rock or that's i think he's i think that's what he's he's asking for people to support is hmm. um i don't know mount Sugarloaf <laughs> is a sandstone sedimentary rock and it's also the basis <laughs> for the it's also the basis for the indigenous creation myth of Obamo. so uh Yes, but a sedimentary rock is not is not the same as the sedimentary structure, uh, a category that he is proposing. So, oh, and in case anyone's wondering, the state rock is actually Roxbury conglomerate. It's, um, yeah. So, anyway, um, now we know the uh, the sec the second you know piece of mail. You know that. Oh, oh you know what I, I'm sorry. Rock. 
I was going to be an earth science teacher. And, and, and I'm sorry, it's actually Roxbury Pudding Stone. Uh, the type of rock is a conglomerate. Uh, so, yeah, well, Roxbury Pudding Stone. What you're going to have to know here, you know, you're going to you're going to have to get a quiz on this. Sorry, Tom. I, yeah, I think it's um, I think it's like Article five in the uh, or Chapter five in the in the mass general laws is all of the official state. This is and that. It might even be two article uh, uh, chapter two. It's really early on in the mass general laws. Anyway, so also in the mail, um, this came in as an email. Uh, the Department of Public Utilities is pleased to announce that it has opened an investigation focused on increasing public awareness of and participation in DPU proceedings. Um, through this investigation, the DPU will explore opportunities to increase stakeholder engagement and ensure that, regardless of English proficiency, all people have been provided with the same opportunity to participate in our proceedings. So they've also been developing an agency-specific environmental justice strategy uh, consistent with uh, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs environmental justice policy and the comprehensive climate legislation re recently signed into law. The DPU has opened this investigation as part of these efforts to explore new strategies to boost community outreach and increase participation and engagement in our proceedings. So it's just a notice that they're um, they're they're open to uh, to more participation in their proceedings. But I thought it was interesting enough that I would I would mention it. Tom, I felt it was you, you highlighted the difficulty perfectly by sending us that letter from the DPU written in Spanish <laughs> that, that 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 I could not read. I'm sorry. So, so that's turning the tables i felt perfectly oh and and um actually there's uh there's um one more piece um uh from the franklin land trust uh they are um uh hoping for a self-guided recreational bike ride on saturday august 21st um i think they've done this before and uh, this is just a uh, a note that there will be bicycle riders all over the county and beyond, and um, uh, just making us aware of this potential event. If anybody wants to ride bikes, um, uh, so um, you might want to um, uh, get involved in this again Saturday, August 21st, for the Franklin Land Trust, a self-guided recreational bike ride. Great. Well, that's that. So, so now is when we usually do announcements, and I have one announcement, and that is that the COVID task force has announced that they're going to be holding a drive-through clinic. I believe it's at GCC, and if you go to our Conway webpage, you can read all about it. Uh, this is the first drive-through clinic that we've had, and and though it's really great, I mean, we've practiced a lot of drive-through clinics up until now for the flu shots. So anybody 18 years of age and older can come with no reservation, but they do ask you to sign up. So. And I know that as of um, a couple of hours ago, only about a third of the slot for Friday were taken. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a couple of hours ago. So it, that might not be the case right now. And I know that the uh, FERCOG, they, they re released their you know, appointment availability on certain dates, which I don't know exactly what that is, but um, I was, it was just, I, it was, maybe it was, I was very optimistic <laughs> to know that, um, you know, they released their appointments this morning and by this afternoon, only a third had been taken instead of all of them all at once. So. So I'll, I'll chip in here a little bit because FERCOG, we talked a lot about this at FERCOG's meet, uh, the counselors meeting uh, because the, the, right now, they're still doing these other clinics. You know, they did the couple in Deerfield that, uh, at, and other places throughout the county. They're going to be transitioning to sort of just the GCC drive-through once the once the attendance at the other clinics begins to to fall down a little bit. But there is, uh, and, and as a county, 
we're we're in the 60 we're you know in the high 60s already a percent of adults that have had at least one shot um and we're doing better than the national average and um we're as a county as a group of community as and conway in particular is doing very well with vaccination rates um and above the national average and uh above the state average etc and um but the 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 the, there was a a big thing about what to do you know what else to do besides the gcc drive-through in june and july once the once the vaccine rates are high enough that there's not going to be a, a overwhelming crush of people um, anymore. And, and so I, uh, I'm hopeful that what they're going to be doing, at least towards the tail end of it, is sending the, the county nurse with like 20 or 50 vaccinations to, to you know, we're, we, we participate in that program. So I'm hopeful that we'll end up with like a Lisa White on Friday morning foot care to do, doing vaccines for the remnants of our town that haven't gotten it. Um, but that's not going to start. Awesome. That's not going to start for another month or so. So in the meantime, if you can get a vaccine elsewhere. This is great news. But, yeah. So our next meeting will be next Monday, April 26th, 6 p.m., right back here by Zoom. But something to think about between now and then is to start thinking about whether we think it's time to go to every other week. So next week is a warrant signing week, so we got to do it next week and a poll hearing already scheduled. But after that, we have pretty light agendas lately. So we never talked about the town clerk's uh, request about the clickers. Oh, yeah. That was something that Ross brought up, though. Um, I mean, did, and, and how about we plan that for next week? Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think we're getting a yeah, lot of yeah. Ross, clickers. Ross brought it up in our conversation, and then the town clerk sent out that thing about she priced it out and she wants to do it. Yeah, and especially if there's CARES Act money for it that doesn't need finance committee approval, although it seems like they would probably want to look at it anyway. Um, so I hope this is yeah. all uh, enticing lots of people to come to our meeting next week. <laughs> so on that, I'm going to... I'm gonna, End the. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we end the meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay, and I'll say aye. And I see Phil nodding, and Erica is virtually nodding. So, thank yes. you. Yeah. Great. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night, Ross. Good night. Good night. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs>